Ah, you've got the itch. But your itch is a bit different. You don't just want a motorcycle, you want an old motorcycle. Oh, they look and sound so much better. Wow, when you read it, oh my god. Yeah, you can't argue with that. I've made a few videos about the specific aspects, both positive and negative, of owning and riding and maintaining an old motorcycle. In this video, I want to look at the experience as a whole, what classic bikes are like to live with, how you should approach buying one, and also which bikes to potentially look for getting for yourself. Basically, this is the video that I needed to see before I got a classic motorcycle. There really is quite a lot to know. Getting a motorcycle in general isn't something that you should just do, and that's even more true for classic motorcycles. And like new bikes that are available, and even more so, there are endless options for different purposes, and each classic bike has its own strengths and weaknesses. Some are more reliable, some are less reliable, faster or slower, simple or difficult to maintain and keep in order. So really take your time, enjoy the process of learning and figuring out the right bike for you before you get yourself too excited about that classic bike that just popped up on Marketplace or Craigslist in your area. Now we should clarify, when I think of a classic motorcycle, I generally think of anything prior to the 1980s, but not really pre-World War II. Most would say that pre-war motorcycles are vintage, whereas classic is sort of post-war up until, you know, technically like 30 years ago. But most of what we talk about will apply to bikes that are newer than the 70s, let's say bikes from the 80s. That's just how I think about it in terms of style that really is like the classic period. It kind of ends with the 80s. And most people looking to get a classic bike are really interested in motorcycles primarily from the 60s and 70s. Now before you even begin looking at classic bikes, you really should figure out what exactly you want your motorcycle to do for you. Do you have a short commute to work that you'd like to use your bike for every now and then? Do you plan on going on the highway or riding down the coast or riding across the country? Do you just want something to ride on the weekends for a bit? Will this be your only motorcycles or do you already have you know, a new bike that you can depend on? This all matters for the kind of motorcycle that you get. Now some would say flat out that you can't depend on a classic bike for really anything commuting, long distance trips, and to be honest, this is just silly. Of course, many modern motorcycles are more reliable than classic ones, but not all of them. A solid, well-built, simple 70s bike from say something like Honda or Yamaha can be more reliable than say a new, more exotic, and also tech-heavy motorcycle. Because there's less going on, they're more simple, and there is in some ways less that can go wrong. And this is where I would think long and hard about what specific motorcycle you're gonna get. If you need that thing to start every single time, like as in you only have this one vehicle and it's this classic motorcycle, of course it would probably be smarter to get a new bike, but if not, I'd recommend getting a Japanese bike, specifically something like a Honda, or maybe also something like a BMW Airhead, which are also known for their simplicity and incredible reliability and longevity. Maybe throw on something like an electronic ignition so that it starts better every time, get it tuned and checked out by an expert, and then you know you've got yourself a simple and probably reliable machine. But let's say you already own a newer bike that you use for those moments when you just don't want the hassle, or maybe this will be your only bike, but you know it's not the end of the world if it's out for a week or two. It's just motorcycling is something you just do for fun like I do. Then things really do open up for you. You have more options. And I would say that in this case, you can consider things like, you know, an Italian motorcycle or a British motorcycle or even, you know, some American bikes that, you know, many would not consider quite as reliable as, say, a Japanese bike from the 70s. No matter what you end up getting, whether it's a Honda CB550 or a Triumph Bonneville or a Moto Guzzi California, if it's 50 plus years old, you're gonna run into problems at some point. And if you have little or no mechanical experience, you absolutely have to find a shop near you that specializes in whatever you have. If there's nobody in your area who can work on, for example, that old Moto Guzzi and you've never worked on anything in your life, chances are that bike is gonna end up a non-running Craigslist ad relatively soon over something probably simple. There are loads of Facebook groups dedicated to specific old motorcycle brands and models, so that's an easy way to get info and even find people who'd be willing to work on your bike. I've had a guy work on my bike 
who, you know, didn't have an official shop or anything, but he was just part of the Facebook group and he lives in my area and he works on his friend's bikes and his own bikes and he's been doing it for 30 years. So he put new tires on and checked my valves and did some of that stuff for me. So yeah, there's always options. You just have to sometimes look a little closer, but if you live in the middle of nowhere and there's no shops near you, I don't know, you want to definitely be careful. Of course, part of getting a classic bike is learning how to work on it. I'm not saying that that's not true, but people who have no mechanical experience, they often romanticize working on their motorcycle. They use words like tinkering. Oh, I just want to tinker with it. Well, what does tinkering mean? You're either going to become a mechanic in some way who's able to do things like adjust valves or rebuild forks or troubleshoot problems like electrical or carburetor problems or you're not going to be able to do any of those things. There is no such thing as tinkering. That's just a cute word that I feel like is used to minimize what it actually takes to do mechanical work on a machine. And don't kid yourself. Odds are you have a lot going on in your life and actually making time to read books and watch videos and specifically read your motorcycle's shop manual, all of that will easily be pushed to the back burner when you've had a long day of work and it's just easier to watch Netflix. Of course, this is a different story if you do have some mechanical experience. It just seems like a lot of people who get classic bikes, myself included, have no experience actually working on really anything. So if you can find a shop or a local guy who you can trust to work on your bike and who will allow you to learn from them along the way, that's the best scenario because any little bits of work you do on your bike will create sort of this bond between you and the machine. Getting to do little bits of work on my Triumph and knowing that it's running the best it's ever run today because I took some time to learn some things and to get it to that place. Well, that's just an amazing feeling. If you have worked on cars or have some mechanical experience outside of motorcycles, a classic bike will be very simple and rewarding for you. Something like an old Triumph or an old Honda or BMW. They're really easy compared to working on most cars. Everything is easy to get to and simple. So as long as you understand the need to have someone who can work on your bike, if you aren't the person to do so, then now you can start looking at specific motorcycles that might be good for you. Let's start with a person who needs more reliability and maybe a bit more touring capabilities. A really nice Honda CB750 at this point will cost you quite a bit of money, but you can pick up a nice, highly original CB500 or CB550 or even CB400. Those are all inline fours for under 5,000, basically anywhere in the States. Those bikes can cruise down the highway fine, and when they're set up properly, they're incredibly reliable. But if you're looking to get a bigger bike, the CB750 Super Sport from a bit later, those are cheaper and in many ways better than the early CBs. They don't have quite the classical look, but they still do look classic. And at this point, they're more affordable. I mentioned BMW Airheads, the later R75 and R90s of the 1970s. These are amazing options with more touring potential than most classic bikes from that era. Also, these BMW Airheads have really characterful engines versus, you know, some of the CB inline fours. But really, I want this video to be a place for all the experts to give their options and opinions as well in the comments below. So make sure to check out what people are saying uh, for some awesome motorcycle options. I know a lot of you guys will chime in. Now, if you're okay with maybe getting something smaller, say you're looking for a fun little bike and you're not as concerned with touring or hauling stuff or hauling a passenger or going long distance on the highway, obviously you can't go wrong with a nice CB350 and you're not gonna spend a whole lot of money or really any of the Honda Twins from the 60s and 70s. They're all fantastic. They're all fun little bikes super affordable. The CB450 is such an amazing option with loads of power and they're still not that expensive. Or if you like, you know, more of the enduro look from this time, Honda and Yamaha have loads of smaller bikes that also look great. So take your time, find the bike you like, learn the different models through the different years and which colors they're supposed to be and which features they're supposed to have so that you know when a bike is original because finding an original bike in my opinion, is the best way to go in terms of value. You can get original bikes that are in good condition for relatively cheap, but I think in the long term, keeping them original and keeping them nice is a great way to have your investment go up. But also when it comes time to put new parts on that bike, let's say a new air filter or clutch cable, always get OEM parts. 
Don't buy cheap aftermarket stuff. Don't put pod filters on your Honda CB. It doesn't make them faster. They run best in every way on all the original stuff. Honda knew these machines better than you and I, so just get the correct parts for the bike. <laughs> and this is true of all classic motorcycles. Now, if you want to get something a bit more exotic, I'd recommend maybe something like a Triumph 350 or 500 Twin from the 60s. Obviously, I'm biased. I own a T100 from 1968, but this bike, I don't know, it just does it all for me. It looks and sounds great. It's fun to ride. They really are reliable if you can get a good one that's been set up properly. And it's got so much character. And again, it just looks great. Parts are readily available. And you know, it's a bit fun owning something British. Perhaps the best bang for your buck would be a later Triumph Daytona, something like a 71 or 72. Those were updated with better brakes and they're actually cheaper than the 60s models. I mean, these will go on Bring a Trailer even for less than $6,000 and you could easily find a nice local one for probably like four grand. Though classic American motorcycles are mostly out of reach for someone on a budget, you can get early Sportsters for a reasonable price, you know, maybe under 7,000 and that's, you know, a classic classic American loud characterful bike with potential to go way up in value even from the AMF period when Harley was kind of in turmoil even those bikes are starting to go up though I would probably try to find a pre-70s Sportster if I was looking for one the very early Sportsters are really expensive but let's say like a 67 68 69 Sportster that's fairly original those bikes are awesome they're loud they're cool and yeah you just got to be careful kickstarting those because you know you can break your leg so you know again become an expert on the bike you want and all the features of every model year and read books and really sort of create your dream bike in your head now if you want something even more exotic you could get you know a small red italian bike from the 60s say something like a galera or maybe a benelli or something like an mv gusto 125s I think that these little Italian bikes, based on their small displacement race bikes from that time, are really fun options. A bit more rare, but not necessarily more expensive. Parts and having someone work on them might be a bit more difficult. But again, these are bikes for those who don't necessarily care if the bike is out you know, for a bit of work. This isn't a bike you probably would want to get and commute on it. I mean, we could go on for hours talking about all the different motorcycles that you could pick from, say, the 50s through the 70s. Sadly, many of the coolest ones are going up in price so fast, it's difficult to even find them. Bikes like the Kawasaki Z1 or the pre-60s Triumphs. But, you know, that's half the fun. Buy some books on the history of different companies, learn some stuff, and see if you stumble on any bikes that maybe you hadn't heard of and that you really could potentially fall in love with. Much like having a mechanic when you do actually own the bike, if there's also a way that you can get the bike that you're interested in inspected prior to purchasing it, I would definitely recommend that. If you're from a major city where there's a classic motorcycle repair shop, that may be a service that they offer, and I don't know how much it'll cost, probably not a ton. That is a service I would absolutely take them up on if you can, because those people are going to know more than you about what a really solid motorcycle looks like that is, you know, specific brand and a specific model. And never, I mean, basically never get a project bike thinking you'll fix it up. You could do that on the side if you already have a bike that runs, but you have to realize there's a really good chance that that project will forever be a project. It will never ever be completed because a lot of people get project bikes, I did this myself, thinking that they can do and learn more than really they have the time to learn and do. So get yourself something that runs above all else. There's really nothing like owning a classic motorcycle or just a classic vehicle in general. With classic cars, you do get more attention. Most people don't really care about me on my old Triumph. They don't even notice. But you know, if you're driving around in some old truck or car, people will stop and take pictures. And you know, that's just because cars are such a universal thing. Riding motorcycles is obviously more niche. But the experience of riding and just feeling so much more in tune with your bike and with the road because there's no computers and it's all just basic mechanics. It's so much more just analog feeling. And then going places and, you know, looking back and seeing your old motorcycle parked in the parking lot with all of its chrome and just simple, subtle beauty. It's amazing how much your classic bike will stand out in a parking lot. Sometimes I park far away from everybody, like way out in the parking lot. Not so much because I'm worried about the bike getting hit by someone, but just because 
it makes the walk to the bike that much longer and I get to sort of admire my motorcycle for longer. I know that sounds weird, but if you own a classic motorcycle or car, you know, you probably get what I'm talking about. For me, there's nothing like just going for a short ride later in the day when it's cooled off just a bit and the sun is sort of thinking about going down and it's just you and the wind and your old engine just breathing freely and loudly because it's not choked out by the exhaust or by, you know, a catalytic converter. It's just the best. Though I do believe classic bikes can be bought and used for different purposes, for me, this is where they shine. You know, just short evening rides, spirited rides out on the twisties, you know, just fun, often with no real destination or purpose. It's not just the fear that the bike could break down for me for like commuting or going on really long rides. Old motorcycles aren't as comfortable, they vibrate, they rattle, they're often louder. You feel everything that's happening, which is what makes them great but at the same time, it can get old for long trips. If you wanna get the most out of a classic bike, make it your dream bike. Don't just go buy the first thing that catches your eye. I'm going through this now as I'm looking to get a classic car. At first I was looking at British cars like MG Midgets and MGB GTs, and now I've been looking more at Triumph TR6s, which is I think actually what I'm gonna end up getting. And even though I don't necessarily want to, I will potentially have two Triumphs in the stable. But yeah, just let things settle, you know? If you find something you like, sit on it for a while. There's no rush and, you know, give yourself even a year if needed to figure out what's best for you and then wait for the best option to pop up you know you need to even be willing to maybe go a few hours or buy a bike and ship it bring a trailer is a great route for this i know buying a motorcycle sight unseen is tough but the community around collectors on bring a trailer is what's so valuable the underappreciated classic bikes really do go for decent prices on there and you have that forum where people can chime in and say what they think and point out problems with the bike. You also normally have a video or two of the bike being cold started and ridden, hundreds of pictures. I mean, if I had a really specific classic bike that I wanted to get, I would probably go that route. I would probably just get it on Bring a Trailer, spend a little bit more, and then obviously you're going to have to ship it as well. But having that truck pull up and drop off your new classic motorcycle is just the coolest experience. There's nothing like it. In my case, I'd never actually gotten to see an old Triumph in real life before I bought one, just videos and pictures. So to see my motorcycle, you know, that was now mine for the first time, I don't know, it was just like the best Christmas or birthday present ever. So hope you guys found this at least somewhat helpful and hopefully you found it enjoyable. Let us know down in the comments what classic bike you're looking to get or what classic bike you already own. And yeah, hope you guys are doing well, ride safe, and we'll see you in the next one.